Olympics recently announced data from three oral presentations at the 2022 American Transplant Congress by faculty at the Center for Transplantation Sciences at Massachusetts General Hospital. And with me to explain the significance of this, the CEO, Seth Letterman. Great to see you again, Seth. Thank you for having me on, Jane. So let's talk about this. So this data involves studies of the TNX 1500 product candidate for the prevention of organ transplant rejection. So what, what did the data tell us about that? It was a very exciting day and I was glad to be there in person. The faculty from Massachusetts General Hospital, which is a part of Harvard Medical School, are collaborating with us to study TNX 1500 in transplantation. And they got really interesting results in both kidney transplant and heart transplant. And this is a monoclonal antibody, which is one of the biggest categories in the pharmaceutical sector because monoclonal antibodies are so specific and they have such great therapeutic potential that except for Pfizer's mRNA vaccine, the biggest products in, in, in pharmaceuticals tend to be monoclonal antibodies. Yeah. What the results showed was the treatment with TNX 1500 prevented the rejection of kidneys or of hearts in monotherapy, meaning that they could be just used alone with only this therapy. Okay. So this is a really potential new treatment to prevent organ transplant rejection. Well, interesting. And the monoclonal, by the way, I think we've all become familiar with that term. <laughs> like we've all gotten a lot more familiar with pharmaceutical terms, I think, over the past couple of years. Okay, so that is, that's major. So this was, a, what, an initial trial, or what's next for this? Uh, the TNX 1500 interacts with a molecule in the immune system called CD40 ligand. And people have tried to make good monoclonal antibodies against CD40 ligand for many years. Hmm. It's been known that this is a very promising target, but Tonix was able to engineer this particular antibody so it would have all of the activity that people had hoped for, and it did not have the toxicity that had been seen with earlier versions. Interesting. So, the next step, we, we've guided that we will be in phase one trials in humans before the end of this year. Okay, interesting. Now, you're also doing some work with monkeypox and smallpox, um, which I understand are kind of similar. This is TNX801, and you presented some data there at the Canadian Society of Virology. So explain what, that, what you're working on there. Yes. The, Unfortunately, I couldn't be in Canada and Boston at the same time, <laughs> but other people from the company were there. It's very exciting because monkeypox is now an emergent threat. You may have seen that what started as a few cases outside of Africa has grown to first 300, then 900, and we don't know where it's going. Monkeypox is in the same family of viruses as smallpox. But we've been working on these two viruses, on a vaccine for these two viruses, for many years. And we have already very compelling data showing that our vaccine protects monkeys from a lethal challenge with monkeypox. So we are racing forward to get this in a position for human clinical trials. Mm -hmm. Should we be worried about monkeypox? What do you think? <laughs> well. I think two things. One is that as frightening as the current outbreaks are outside of Africa, they are from a West African strain of monkeypox. And so far, to my knowledge, no one has died. Mm. There is a monkeypox strain in Central Africa that has a mortality that could be as high as 10%. Now that uh, could, could be, it's more lethal in uh, infants and in older people. Okay. So, but it's, it has a significant mortality associated with it. So I think that we need to take this current monkeypox outbreak very seriously, but it's a warning sign that we need to be on the lookout for the Central African strain. Okay. Because if the Central African strain 
had the same outbreak outside of Africa, it would be devastating. But it's, I don't mean to minimize what's already happened with the West African strain. Mm -hmm. This is a real threat to public health. Mm. So just something to definitely watch and keep an eye on. Um, yes. Goodness. Okay. So you also recently had a patent issue uh, that provides TNX-801 and other vaccines that use the same technology with patent protection. Um, so explain that. How long would that protection last? Well, it, it was very, it's always very exciting to get a patent issued in the United States. The United States has a very high bar for issuing patents. And we were very pleased because this technology is the patent behind our monkeypox and smallpox vaccine. And it's also the patent underlying our vaccines for other conditions such as COVID. And we were gratified by this because we really are leaders in synthetic biology. We actually made this virus specifically to serve as a vaccine for smallpox and monkeypox. So on the one hand, the technology we're using is based on the oldest vaccine technology. Yeah. It's 220 years old, but actually we're using all of the most modern methods in molecular biology and synthetic biology to bring a novel vaccine to market for smallpox and monkeypox. Okay, and the patent is till what, 2037 or? I believe it's so, 2037. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and any final thoughts about tonics, where you're headed for the rest of 2022? Well, we are, tonics is at a very exciting point. We're working some of the most exciting areas and some of the most challenging areas facing, facing humanity today. Mm -hmm. Obviously, monkeypox is just breaking out all over the world, uh, originally came from Africa. Smallpox is a threat because of the risk of malicious reintroduction by rogue nations or terrorists. And one of our most exciting programs that's in the clinic uh, now is for fibromyalgia, okay. which is a pain disorder that um, causes a lot of disability and will soon be in the clinic with a treatment for long COVID, yeah. okay. another big problem. So we have a lot going on at Tonics. I'm very <laughs> grateful to you for bringing me on the show to discuss Yeah, it. no, I appreciate it. It's always interesting to hear and important work too. So thank you. Thank you so much, Seth. Thank you. Okay.